Hey guys, welcome back to Film Truth. Today we'll talk about how hard it is to mine opal. Let's head into it. Black Opal Mining Black Opal Mining is a difficult game to play, and it's even more difficult to locate. To strike it rich, it takes a lot of effort, and in some cases, a long time. Opal mining machinery evolved and progressed in tandem with the industry. Even within Australia, different types of machinery were needed and designed specifically for the area and terrain where the opal miners worked. Find, dig out, and sort the opal. When prospecting leases became available, the miners would hire a driller to come in and test drill the area in the hopes of finding opal bearing dirt. Opal miners were allowed to have two claims in their name, each measuring 50 by 50 meters. Once a suitable area had been identified, the rig would drill a one meter hole down the shaft to a depth of 20 to 30 meters, which will serve as the entrance to the opal mine. The miner would then dig a tunnel called a drive that would run parallel to the shaft. The miner would then be able to look for the opal. To remove the opal dirt, tools like a jackhammer or a digger would be used to bring it to the surface and sort it. This is done with a hoist or a blower, and the opal dirt is loaded into a truck on the surface. The dry blower eliminated the need to hoist the opal bearing dirt to the surface, and some models were capable of blowing the dirt up to 30 meters. The trucks are then unloaded into a dry agitator machine. For several hours, the opal bearing dirt is tumbled and washed. The remaining tailings are sorted at the end of the process in the hopes of finding the elusive opal. The agitators were dry in the beginning, but as mining became more sophisticated, the Miners Association built dams and ponds that were fed with artesian water, increasing opal production. Many of today's opal mining techniques were developed in the early years and are still used today. The majority of mines in Lightning Ridge are underground, with only one large open cut mine that is no longer in operation. At Lightning Ridge, opal mining is still done by individual miners or small groups of miners rather than by large corporations. The Lightning Ridge opal fields in the late 1970s are currently being depicted on your screen. The photographs depict daily life in the opal fields in the summer complete with mining equipment. Because mining equipment could not be purchased at the time, many opal miners built their own. In the early days of mining, engineering firms popped up all over Australia's opal fields, building rigs, opal blowers, and performing repairs because getting spare parts from other towns or overseas could take weeks. Even today, engineering companies make a lot of spare parts because they have tooling and it's cheaper and faster to make their own opal mining equipment locally. How Opal Miners Search for Opal Opal miners face numerous challenges when mining for opal, making the pursuit of opals a difficult lifestyle. Living in arid desert outback camps with no electricity or internet access is a challenge. Only the tough can survive in this harsh environment. Even at Lightning Ridge, where the black opal is found, they're fortunate to have a water table close to the surface, making water access simple. Instead of having to drive all the way into town, which is about 40 kilometres on dirt road, we have our own little private one out here in the middle of nowhere. However, this water is extremely hot. The temperature is around 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So the water is boiling when one takes a shower. It also has an unpleasant odor due to the high mineral content in the water. Many bush camps lack showers or have Hessian showers, which are essentially a bag hung from a tree with cool water inside. There are several methods for mining opals. Opal divining. This is similar to water divining, where a miner uses a rod and can feel or see movement when there's water present. In this case, some people will search for opals underground in areas where certain scrub grows. Many people have attempted to find opal or slips in the earth using scientific instruments, but none have been commercially successful. Many miners today will go back to old mines to look for opals that have been left behind, or they'll go open cut and combine several claims. Open Cut Mining An open cut opal mine is depicted in the image on your screen. 
It depicts the old mine shafts used by the pioneers. Because all of the direct opal is removed, this method of opal mining is very expensive, but it ensures that hidden pockets of opal are never missed. Open cut mines require a $100,000 bond, as well as the cost of digging and machinery, and you must backfill even if no opals are found. The best method, according to old timers, is to throw a hat in the air and start digging where it lands. Others advise spending between $5,000 and $30,000 on a productive claim that has produced some color. Although no one sells a gun claim, some top stones have been discovered this way. Environmental Opal Mining Methods when an opal miner is working on a claim, he now has to fill in the mine shaft once the mining is completed. There's now a $250,000 deposit for open cut mine before you can begin mining for black opals in Lightning Ridge. Backfilling and revegetating these open cut mines can be costly. When the deposits are close to the surface, a new method uses an excavator. While working in shallow ground near the end of their lease, some miners in Queensland, Boulder Opal Fields, began to use this method. The miners would dig a trench with a large excavator and a bucket that was a meter wide or about three feet wide. They would dig a trench about six bucket loads wide by 20 meters long and backfill as they worked their claim. Some miners have tested small claims with a standard backhoe on a tractor and have recovered some large parcels of rough opals. Even the guys who work the fire opal fields in Western Australia use a tractor and trailer to test and work some areas. Because most opal mines in Lightning Ridge have opal at deep depths, opal miners have not used this method, but some miners are working mines stage by stage and cutting into their leases on a stepping stone basis. The Outback Opal Hunters. And it was a nice colour. It was a good thing. See the flash? Yep. Looking good, isn't it? Outback Opal Hunters is an Australian factual television show that follows opal miners in New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, and Western Australia. Pete Cook and Sam Westra from Lightning Ridge, New South Wales, go from extreme to extraordinary in the season finale when they unearth a unique double-faced black opal knobby valued at $120,000, the most valuable single piece of opal uncovered in the series to date. Pete and Sam's entire season is riding on four tons of stone from their 100-year-old open-cut mine, Old Nobbies, after three months of losing money. There are some promising little gems as they sift through the rocks before Pete discovers the stone, which is a watershed moment. The 9-gram double-sided black knobby, dubbed Fire and Ice by Pete, due to its brilliant flashes of red and deep blue, sees the team hit their stride. The stone was initially valued at $55,000 on camera, but after meeting with an opal carver, the value was increased to an impressive $120,000. This comes after the pair discovered a $49,000 black knobby in episode two. So, with the background info about how hard and complicated it is to mine opal, these finds by the Outback Opal Hunters are truly amazing and astonishing. Pretty nice to know. What do you think about opal mining? Did you know how hard it is? Let us know in the comments section. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.